Hi guys, it's Rach. Today we're going to be answering the question, is it magic or is it foundation? Now I'm going to call it early and probably say that it's foundation with magic in the title. Yes, today I'm going to be reviewing the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation. There was a lot of fanfare when this was released. I was quite excited because I have been enjoying quite a few of Charlotte's products. There was that whole sort of campaign, is it magic, is it foundation, is it magic, is it foundation, is it magic. It it went on for a bit um, and it was, it was very, very hyped. So I wanted to try it for myself. Here we have it. It's a lovely bottle. One of the kind of ones that you probably want to sit on your, I guess, dressing table. Does anybody actually do that? Let me know if you have your makeup and foundation sort of set out there it is a um, I'd like to see a photo if, if you do um, it is a, it's a lovely glass bottle here you have your standard 30 mils we have the rose gold accents that is to be expected from Charlotte Tilbury has a pump which you actually have to pull the cap off it is quite sturdy in there when I first got it I actually like started to twist it and reveal the fact that it does come off but no there is a pump hidden under there it's not the most I guess expensive looking pump I think it actually looks a little bit cheap but it does um, allow you to control how much product you dispense can be a little bit messy but as long as you sort of wipe it off after yourself you can get the product out there it comes in 15 shades the darkest being shade 12 and they do range from quite light to quite dark and there's a few half shades in between I have picked up the shade 4 which is fair I just had to guess for reference I'm around an NC to NW20 I kind of have quite neutral undertones and this seems to match me relatively well unfortunately we can't try it out in store so it is a bit of a guessing game but I would recommend looking up swatches online and, and watching other reviews and seeing what kind of colors people are picking up based on their skin tone and what other foundations that they use I have relatively I guess it, it's a com it's combination skin I have an oily t-zone I have dry sort of dehydrated to normal skin on the outer portions of my face and as you can see I have a bit of redness I did actually just take off my makeup so that's why my face is a little bit red but I also am acne prone so I'm looking to cover that I have kind of large pores around the center of my face so I, I do want the my foundations to be relatively smoothing and I'm looking for generally decent coverage it doesn't need to be full coverage but I want my skin to look evened out and and perfected according to the box this foundation is a full coverage demi matte long-lasting foundation enriched with hyaluronic acid laracil and the concentrated power of vitamin C vitamin C vitamin C skin is moisturized dewy and pores are minimized it says for flawless coverage apply the foundation starting in the center of the face and working outwards finish with the airbrush flawless finish powder along the t-zone and chin to control shine so even though it does say it's demi matte and long lasting it does actually recommend to set with a powder so I am going to do that I'm gonna apply one pump to begin with you do get a decent amount of product and as you can see it's, it's on the creamier side, it's not sort of dripping too quickly down uh, my hand there. I don't have the brush that they recommend that you apply it with, so I'm just going to apply it with the Real Techniques Multitasker brush. It's kind of hard to tell. I'd say that this particular shade has, it's not overly pink, it's kind of like peachy undertones, not too yellow, not too pink. does have a light scent to it I think I don't think that's the moisturizer oh actually no it's kind of hard to tell it's certainly not overly scented so if you do have an issue with fragrance that's probably a good thing it seems to be blending into my skin decently I am noticing in my um, magnified mirror some brush strokes and that may be from the brush although I do use this for other foundations and don't have a problem so I might have to go in with my beauty blender and see if I can smooth that out a bit I would say at the moment it has sort of light to light medium coverage I can still see my blemishes sort of poking through and a little bit of redness it is blending in but it's taking a little bit more work I can kind of see it in, on my skin. It's not terribly bad, like nothing that I would be embarrassed, but I can certainly see it in my skin. So it's not 
it's not like disappearing as if this is my real skin like you're not going to think that I'm not wearing foundation you can tell that I'm wearing foundation I'm gonna take a little bit more product and I've just dampened my beauty blender I'm just gonna see how that goes in terms of building up coverage over areas where I need it I have a bit of a breakout going on down here awesome I know so I'm gonna just dab the foundation on there it does build up but I find that um, the foundation is now more visible on the skin it's not cakey cakey but it's not sort of blending into one if that makes sense doing a decent job I don't think that it's full coverage what does it say it said yeah it does claim to be full coverage so I disagree with that I agree with the demi matte claim it does have a slight luminosity to it but overall I it's not like crazy dewy or anything like that okay so overall I mean looking in the viewfinder it looks pretty good and I mean looking in the mirror far away I think it looks it looks quite nice it looks like I've got medium medium to high coverage it's when I look in the magnified mirror that I can see that it's not quite um, covering everything and it, it's sort of it's sitting on the skin not terribly I mean compared to some of the other foundations that I've tried recently this one is a better one but it's still not sitting as nice as it could and I, I don't feel like it, it it's magically erased every sort of imperfection that I have on my face. I'm not going to add any extra concealer but I will set with a powder because I do have the airbrush flawless finish powder. This one's in the shade uh, number two medium although ideally I'd like to get number one fair because I feel like this might be just a touch dark for me and I'm just going to keep that to the central portion as suggested on the box. This powder overall I find performs quite well. I'll do a little mini review. I don't find it to be cakey um, and it, it sort of sits quite nicely on the skin. It's a little bit smoothing. Um, and just overall, just, it's, it's a nice powder. It does say that the foundation has broad spectrum SPF 15. And I looked at the ingredients list. I'm certainly no scientist and I, I don't know what half of these are. But the top ingredients are water psycho, cyclopentacol. Tassiloxane, which is a silicone, um, talc is the third ingredient, dimethicone, titanium dioxide, so there is definitely that possibility for flashback, but we'll do a test in a sec. Um, there does seem to be some oil, it's low down on the list, but I can see hydrogen, hydrogenated castor oil, so it's not completely oil free. I'll find my phone. One second. I'm back and we'll do a flash test. Now it's not the most attractive photo to begin with but I do feel like I look extra white there so I don't know if this would be the greatest foundation for flash photography. So I'm going to go finish off my makeup and go about my day. I am starting a little bit late. It is already one o'clock, but I will check back in with you guys later and we'll see how this wears. One thing I also want to mention with my pores, I don't feel like this has been particularly smoothing over my pores. It hasn't exacerbated them. So again, something to think about. As for around my eyes, I did put a little bit up there. It's not overly sinking into fine lines. Um, it is a little bit here, it's gone a little bit crepey around the sides of my mouth just in the sort of short time since I've been talking but nothing too terrible. We'll see when I check back in how it's going. So it's now 5.30 so the makeup's been on for a few hours and I'm starting to see um, my natural oils definitely breaking through in the T-zone area. As you can kind of see on the screen, I'm looking quite shiny. I did go out, I went to the shops, and I went out in the heat. It's over 30 degrees today, so it's quite warm. Um, but I still feel like I am probably at the point where I want to powder. It's not terrible, um, and some people might even like this level of dewiness. But for me, I think that um, I, I would definitely want to just put a little bit of powder, at least sort of in this area here, a little bit on my chin. So oil control properties, definitely not the best. 
And other than that, it seems to be wearing relatively well. It hasn't really caked up any more than what it was. Maybe a touch, but, but nothing too extreme. And it still seems to be covering the redness of my blemishes. I've had a little bit probably come off. I did have a little bit of a nap as well. And then I had my face on my arms. So I probably got a little bit of foundation on my arms. But it's, it's holding... I've got a little hair. It's holding up pretty well it's just the oil breakthrough so if you're extremely oily I would already say that this is not going to be the foundation for you if you're looking for like more than four hours or so wear but I can still see my blush I can still see my makeup I haven't had sort of transfer from my mascara under my eyes which is pretty good I am going to leave the makeup on for a little while longer and I'll check back with you at the end of the night I have food in my teeth that's Really attractive, Rachel. Mm. <laughs> so the foundation has been on for almost eight hours now. I've just finished dinner. I had a late dinner and I am ready to have a shower. So as much as I'd like to leave it on for a little bit longer to test how long it would last, I am going to call it a day, give you my final thoughts. I feel like the, the oiliness hasn't progressed Further, which is probably a good thing. Um, the foundation, surprisingly enough, is actually holding up pretty well. I can sort of see a little bit of like my blemishes and marks showing through, but even on the oily patches, like I mean, there's still product there. It's broken down, but not in a terrible way. I've rubbed it off my nose a little bit, and that kind of happened from me sort of eating and rubbing my face and whatnot. But it's still there. It's just it's kind of moving around a bit, like I can play with it kind of sounds gross but that that's it the rest of my face has stayed pretty good it hasn't gone too cakey or too gross so overall I would say that I'm kind of underwhelmed with the foundation it is certainly not terrible by any means but given all the hype and all the claims that it had I feel like it hasn't quite lived up to that but it's not terrible either. It's held up on me better than the uh, Too Faced Born This Way foundation. But I do have other foundations that I like more and wear better on me. You can get this in the UK off the Charlotte Tilbury website. In the US, it's not due to be released until next year, I believe. And for those of you who are in Australia, it's not available on the Charlotte Tilbury website yet, but you can get it off Netta Porter, which is where I purchased this. It was around 52 Australian dollars, which is actually relatively inexpensive for a high-end foundation. Most foundations, particularly in Australia, whether you're looking at MAC or more high-end brands like Dior or Chanel, are a lot more expensive than that. You're looking at more like the 60, the 70, the 80, the 90 dollar mark. So $52 is, is not too bad. It's even cheaper than the Light Wonder Foundation, also from Charlotte Tilbury, which is $75. So that is a positive there, although I will say that I do have a lot of drugstore foundations that I find work better on me and meet my concerns better and are less expensive. So it's something to take into account there. I think my final grade would probably be six and a half stars maybe seven if I was like really pushing it. I think that the flashback thing kind of let me down a little bit. It does have SPS 15 in it which is probably not enough to do a lot of protection but it does offer a little bit for daytime wear. The color range is quite extensive. I think that I would probably be maybe in between shade three and shade four. So I do have to just sort of blend it down my neck but as I get a little bit more of a tan it will probably work better as I move into the summer months. I also like the initial finish and I think it has decent longevity but the oil control properties are quite limited and it's definitely one that I would need to powder throughout the day. The coverage was decent and it's definitely buildable but if you want that complete full coverage look then you're not going to get it with this one and I think it would probably be best for those of you who are on the normal to maybe dry side, not too dry because I don't know how well it would go with flakiness. To be honest, it hasn't fared too bad and I have a little bit of a flaky patch here, but really dry, you may need a, a cream or a moisturizer or something underneath to, to keep your skin looking nice with this foundation. So that brings us to the end of this review. It is certainly not magic, it is just a foundation and a okay one at that. If you have any questions, something that I didn't remember to cover, leave them in the description box below and I will try and answer them for you. I hope 
hope this video has been helpful. Let me know what foundation you would like me to review next and check out my description box for all my links and social media. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and I'll talk to you all next time. Bye!